Hello. Hello. <laughs> Just started like this. Hey, everyone. What's Hello. going on? Oh, no. Oh, no. My, no. Lap- my laptop's not plugged in behind. Oh, no. Ruined. Look at that. Now you can't unsee that. It's just it's just a little bit unplugged. A little bit. It's gone. Good. Hey Gabe. Hey. I saved this for the for the actual show, not the pre show. Oh no. You know what day it is today? It's it's February fourteenth. <laughs> I don't know, it's February fourteenth to me. It's Valentine's Day. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Okay. I love a little bit of art. I get the answer about awkwardness. That's good. Well, Hi. Hi. How's it going? It's episode 8. Episode 8. We're going to be looking at standard libraries today. Yes, we are. And yeah. we're kind of going into the home stretch. Home stretch? Yeah. So there are... Uh, so I looked at the plan, or like how we're going to set this up. And I decided that there are two more episodes to go. So we're going we're gonna to end it on a clean 10 episodes. Yeah. So that's a good... That's a healthy second season. Yes, it Healthy is. second Heck season. Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> a heckin' second season. Yeah. So, in this episode, we're going to look at the Sun of Library. And then, in the next two, uh, we basically have all the tools we need to make something. So, in the next episode, we're going to make a little foundation of some sort of a game thing. And then, the last episode, I want to have a little bit of a surprise. Oh, snap. I don't know if it's going to be as big as season one, but I want to try. I mean, every season should end with some sort of... Uh, Twist, twist, or tata, or something that you didn't realize you've been doing all along. Those are the fun ones, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Good. So, two more. Two more. Let's go. Including this one. No, no not including. No, not, not including this one. So three more, including this one. It was so smooth, and you come up and stumble I, all over it. I can count. Let's go. Let's go. I picked the right screen this time. Oh no. Oh no. Do you have OBS running? That's probably the problem. <laughs> The one thing we didn't check. Now who's the unsmooth one? <laughs> there we go. All right, we now go. Oh, we're good. That was uh, fast. Yeah, nothing happened. Good. Take two. Yep. Oh, um, hey, hey, hi. Struck the greeting. Yep. And uh, void hi, Gabe. Hi, Gabe. Hi. How are you? <laughs> void hi, Gabe. That's just you know, just holding any value? Random? What is void again? Just nothing. anything. Nothing. Oh, or anything. No. No? No. Oh, I thought it was both like... Well, it's like avo- infinite. It could be a void pointer. Can be anything. Oh, but a void is nothing. Wow. So I'm nothing. Well, saying hi to you is nothing because it's so easy. Uh, there we go. Uh, there we go. Yeah, there you go. So last week did we practiced with dynamic memory. Yep. Uh, and this week we're gonna go into the homework we did, uh, or that you did, and we all hopefully did. Uh, and we're gonna learn about the standard library a little bit as well. We're gonna get a little introduction to the standard library. So, ready? Yeah. Good. So, homework review. Uh, the first part of it was to practice creating pointers of all of the fundamental types. So, how did that go? Uh, I think it went okay. Hmm? That was probably the thing I understood the most, hmm? I think. Yep. I started playing around with... I th- So, I, we had discussions, because I'm too dumb to do all this myself. Um, about Because I keep confusing type and variable name. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that was kind of my struggle with that. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, I just threw around some ints and some chars and deleted them and returned. Yeah. You said that it was a little trickier to do a char for some reason. No, it was just the the naming of them because of the the way you have to up uh, the because you can assign a, mm-hmm. but that's just the name of the variable. If I if I want a to be, I was trying to make the variable a mm-hmm. hold a different actual value on the ASCII table. Yeah. So it was going to store P. Mm-hmm. Then I kept forgetting that you had to put the little quotes around the, the P quotes, to yeah. actually me- make it mean P. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. it was, otherwise it was like, what's this? I and because we haven't been, like, we haven't been practicing with uh, characters in the past. So this shows that yeah, incremental practice is, is really important. So you need to keep, so here's a thing that you practiced before, you learned it, you, you played with it in the past, but then you've been doing other stuff in the meantime. And now you go back to it and you're like, oh, how did it... So this is just uh, to show that incremental practice is, is very important. Yeah, so I basically just stuck two things into int mains sure. and then had it do something. Sure. And the next one, create a function that creates a dynamic memory and returns it, for example, a function that returns an int, int star. Um, we kind of saw this in the episode, but did you play around with that? Yeah. Yeah? I made something. Mm-hmm. 
Did it work fine? Did you get the value out of the function? It did, but there are two of them here on my document, so I think I just copy pasted it twice. Okay. Do I put it into mine and put my screen on? Sure. Do we want to look at it? Yeah, do that. Bam. Yeah. So okay. I wanted to, <laughs> want to look at clean towels because yeah. for some reason yesterday and, and on Wednesday, I wanted to just talk about towels. It's sometimes you have words stuck in your head. Yeah, I wonder um, why. Yeah, so this is actually not what we were, we were talking about. Uh oh. No. No, so what here, did I do? Because yeah, here we're saying you return an int star, and here you return an int. Oh, man. But this is practice, though. I messed up. It's okay. Failure. It is practice, though, because you, because we had the discussion of how do you send in the value into a function? Like like how you did it in line 14. You do have to do a dereference hot, dereference cold. But then what did I do here? I don't see that one, so. Yeah, I'm just trying to read the other one. The other one's the same thing, mm -hmm. it just doesn't return result. No, it's okay. But the rest, like creating a, a pointer, newing it, giving it a value, sending it into a function, and then deleting it, yes, this is all good in that sense. What would I have needed to do to return the int star? Uh, I can show you if you switch over to mine. Yes. I have just a quick example. You can do this. Oh, wow, okay, that was way, way easier. It's okay. <laughs> but you practiced, it's still practice. So I, here in this case, I could send in uh, an int. I call it a health, argument health, and I just knew an int. You can also do this, where I create the health and then return it. It's the same thing. Some people just like naming things. It's nicer for the for the uh, breakpoint. So if you put a breakpoint on four, then this one on line three is fully created, and you can actually look at it. Here, if you put a breakpoint, you kind of have to put it on four might be you not see the value, you don't see it created. In this case, it's probably simple. If you were creating something more complicated, maybe not an int, maybe a player or a level or something, it might be more complicated. So it's sometimes nicer to, to put put it like this. There's no there's no slowdown in that thing. Like this isn't slower than this. So it's nicer sometimes to just put a four here. Okay, good. I went way into this, <laughs> way, way wrong into <laughs> okay. that one. So the next one, create two classes. Class one was called player. It has both health and damage as dynamic memory. So that was the gimmick. Uh, and uh, we had a talk about this later on um, about because both player was a pointer and also it had a pointer within it. So there was a, a, a gimmick there. And then class two was called combat. It takes into the constructor two player star pointers and makes those two players fight until one of them is dead. So, um, because we had a talk uh, this week, uh, you did the first one, ish. Yeah. Now and then, uh, how long did you get on the second one? Not far at all. Not far. I I managed to get like oh I can go over to mine. Yep. So I kind of understood like this part. So zoom in a little bit so we can see the. So we have player, we have pointer to health and pointer to damage. So I kind of I kind of got that mm -hmm. right. I I was again confusing like these names and the mm -hmm. references and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I kind of got that. Yeah. But then after that, this didn't exist. No. I did combat and just tried to assign some random names to combat and inside the constructor and yeah, that didn't go anywhere. Yeah. What do you What would you find was the most uh, confusing part of it? Just trying to figure out the structure of all of it. Mm -hmm. Like. Who owns what? Who talks to what? Yeah, but like also, like, uh, what are these called again? The, the arguments. Yeah, arguments, not mm -hmm. the references, arguments. Um, just knowing where to put those properly. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, and then it was really just the structure, like all this stuff is like, what? <laughs> I looked at those and went, huh, okay. Yeah, yeah we, we talked a little bit about, because uh, we, we wanted to focus on that, for example, int is a type as it's by itself. Player, as a, as a struct, is also a type, but then player star is also a type, and it's not the same type as player. Yeah. So if you think of player star as a whole thing, it's not separable from each other. You can't separate player and player star. Like If we think about it that way, then uh, just like with int, if you want to send an int into a function, if you have a player star and you want to send the player star into a function, the function needs to take player star. So it needs to just match. So that's uh, basically as simple as that. So they need to match in the types. So if you have a function that takes player, 
you can't send in player star, but <laughs> since you have yeah. player star, you can dereference it, like you did with, uh, like you did in the other example you had, the uh, from hot, the first the homework. Cold and hot. Yeah, yeah. where because you had an int star, yeah, but the function took an int, yeah. So that's why you had to dereference it to get it in. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's look at the uh, example on my end, just to show. Uh, and I put a bug in it, and I want to see if you spot. Well, the I had a bug in mine too. It never, <laughs> it never ends. Yeah, I know that uh, you didn't finish, but that's okay. That's fine. So here, stock player health and damage. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then player a health a damage, and then I have a bull take damage, and I turn true if you died taking the damage. So I have a player. I knew the health and the damage, and then I take the damage. So I dereference health, I minus the damage, and then I return is the dereferenced health less than or equal to zero. So I first change the value, then I ask the question of the value, when you can return like this. So there's a bug here. And this kind of relates to what we talked about uh, in the last two episodes. So does this leak memory? But yeah, there's no delete. Yeah. I'm just assuming there's no delete, Yeah. because I don't see a delete. Yeah, exactly. Where does it leak the memory then? On the health? Uh, both health and damage. So when this goes out of scope, uh. this we need a destructor. So we need player, colon, colon, the tilde yeah. player. And there we just need to say delete health, delete damage. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, here we have combat. I have player one, player two. Takes in player one, player two. I have a thing called fight. And my idea was that fight returned one if player one won. 2 if player 2 won, and then 0 if there was a tie. And then, so, the constructor just looked like this. Because it was the idea of non-owning, that's why I, I set up combat in this way, because I wanted to think about a non-owning uh, pointer. It's the idea that combat didn't create the player, and combat doesn't own the player, combat is borrowing the player. So this is more philosophical, this is more design. You could create combat, where combat takes in the players, and when the fighting is done, combat will delete the players, right? But that means that combat takes ownership. Now combat owns it. Um, but there is nothing, like if you look at this signature, there's nothing that tells you that, which one it is. So usually what we do is that you're never an owning. So uh, often a rule with more modern C++ is if you see a raw pointer, you never own it. Like, if you didn't make the raw pointer, you never own it and you never delete it. You assume that someone else is doing it. So would the would the raw pointer, in this case, be the initial class? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So the player is the owner. So so the bug is in the player, not in the combat. So I have fight. I want to return zero when there's a tie. I do while. And here is the gimmick. So player one is a pointer. And we talked about last time that if you're a pointer, then you need to do the arrow to dereference things. Yeah. So if you wanted to get health, you need to dereference to get health. So you either need to do a star and then dot health, or you need to do the arrow. But health is also a pointer. Uh oh. So that was the gimmick of you need to then dereference this whole thing. So if you think of there's a parenthesis around here, right? Oh, I didn't do that. Mm. So that's probably why it never ended, because the memory addresses were always greater than zero. Did I, does it end now? Let's see. He's trying it live. So here, the question is, I want the while loop to run while both of their healths are greater than zero. So if one of them drops below uh, zero, I want it to end. So I then ask both of them to take damage. The player one takes the damage of player two. The player two takes damage of player one. So he's happy there. And then the loop will end by itself. So then I ask the question, and here's the another gimmick. So I'm asking if player 1's health is greater than 0, and player 2's health is less than or equal to 0. That means that after the loop was over, we have done our fighting, what, how, whatever happened here, we then check. Because the, this loop over here, from 9 to 13, only ends if one of them goes below 0, or 0 or below. So here we're asking, was it player 1 and not player 2? So I'm saying player one health is bigger than 0, and player two health is less than or equal to 0. Player 1, 1, I do the inverse, then it's player 2. That means that if neither of these hit, that means that both of them went below, and we return 0. 
We could also do a check saying like, after play one does the damage, or if the player one takes the damage, then check. Because I hit you first, then you hit me, then I hit you. In this case, we're both allowed to hit at the same time, even though technically I died. It's not a turn based. No. So I took damage from you, and even if I die here, technically, I still am allowed to hit you. Just kind of a simultaneous action here. Okay, so that's it. That was the homework. Let's see if mine works. And then uh, you use it like this. You new player Tim, you new player Bob, and then uh-huh. works. Yeah, good. Um, that means that you had everything except one thing, which was one of the gimmicks. Um, Gabe logging in. <laughs> I don't know why their chat system. Oh no, I know why. Okay. I want to say hi. Hi. Um, yeah, so you make a Tim, give him some values, make a Bob, make, give him some values. Then you send Tim and Bob into the arena. You say arena.fight, you get a result, you turn the results. So you see how clean this is. So this is, again, the importance of creating a nice interface, creating nice uh, classes. Like, I can create a player. I don't know. I don't care how many I create. I can create players. I can create an arena. I can send them to the arena. They can fight, and then that's it. So that's pretty nice there. Okay. Sounds good? Sure. <laughs> good. So, let's go to the standard library. Got to purge. Purge. Just purging some stuff. Purge the evidence. Yeah. <laughs> my, my window looks different again. Like, everything has changed. I don't and know. Why my window hates me. So, standard library. So, C++ is not only a language. So, what we've been doing, kind of, is looking at the language part of it. What, what are the tools and the building blocks to create C++ as a language? So we've kind of avoided a lot of the standard library stuff, even though we touched it a little bit in some episodes. Uh, so it's not only a language, but it also comes with a standard library. And standard library is basically a collection of tools and containers that professionals have made. So um, when C++ is made, uh, since C++ is an ISO standardized language, so there's an ISO committee that standardizes it, they only standardize the rules for the language. They say that uh, ints need to look like this and behave like this, if statements needs to look like this and behave like this. But then they also standardize a library, which says that there are certain containers that you can use. Um, so when a new version of the language comes out, they not only update the language part of it, but also update the library. So some updates, like uh, I think 17 was more library focused. Uh, I think 11 was kind of both. 14 was more language. What are they up to now? Uh, 20 is coming out soon. I think 20 is kind of a mix. There's a large language thing that's coming out, which is uh, I still need to practice with, which is a new way to include files instead of doing the hash include. Yeah, you can do import now, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of a lot of neat things coming out. Um, but what they do is they standardize the committee and, and, and all that, standardize the language and the library, but they don't implement it. They don't put it out into the world. They just, the, you can think of that, that uh, or if you think of it in a kind of a naive way, they only publish the PDF file, and then someone else has to follow the PDF file, if you think of it that way. So we're, we've been using Visual Studio. So there's a team on Visual Studio that looks at the, the standardization of the language and then implements all the features. So Visual Studio might come out with features uh, and they may, might say like, oh no, we are not, we're not ready with these ones, we're ready with those. Then there are other compilers like GCC and, and Clang that also implement the language. So uh, it is the peop- the, it's the compiler's job to basically implement what the committee has said. Uh, it's often called the standard template library. Uh, I'll show you why in a bit. Uh, people have been arguing about that name for years. Um, it, I think it fits. It's okay. Yeah. What's the other name people want? It's just a standard library. Not the, Skip out the template part. Or split it into two libraries. That there's a standard library and then there's the template library. But anyway. Uh, today, we're going to look at a few of the containers. Uh, and we're going to be using three of them. So three of the containers are the important bits that we need to make something fun and a game and, and stuff. Okay? Uh-huh. So, 
Okay, got that? Yeah. Cool, next slide. No. Uh, there's a website called CPP Reference. Uh, and if you go, this is kind of the front page of that page. Um, so it has information about the language. So we've kind of been focusing on this part of it only. Um, and maybe a little headers and yeah. But mostly like, you can see like, de here's declaration, like declaring variables, initialization, function, statements, classes. And we haven't gone into these bottom two, but you see. They're smart pointers. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna look at those today. Uh oh. Uh, but there's more, more stuff. And most of this other stuff is the library. Most of this, not everything, but most of this is. Uh, and I recommend this page. Uh, it's it can get very technical, uh, but if you are able to go through it a bit, uh, it has a lot of examples. Uh, and many of these examples you can actually just copy and use them, so that you can try them out. So number one. Uh, so let's begin with the thing. So STD. Some people say STD. Some people say standard, and some people say stud. Stud, I like stud. Yeah, and that I do that. I say so. I would say stud string. Usually people say stud string. Um, this colon colon. Uh, you remember in classes you had to write like player colon colon player. Yeah, for yeah? the constructor. Yeah, this is this is similar to that, but not that. Uh, this has got the namespace. It looks like it, but it's not it. Yeah. We got a namespace. Yeah, it's got the namespace. It's basically a way to group code because you could make a string by yourself. You could say like, I'm going to make my own string thing. So you don't want to clash with whatever they're making. So what they do is they put all their standard stuff into standard string. So all of their stuff is in the standard namespace. So yeah, this is just a way to make text. You can include string. Uh, if you're including like this with a bigger than less than, that's what it means usually is, is uh, you're including from the operating system or including from something standardized. Does this mean like on the Uplay client we could change, it says this somewhere and mm -hmm. where the Uplay name is and yep. I could change it to something else? Yep. Yep, you can do that. Yeah, and it would be as simple as you find where include string is, you would find where the name is. It would be text like this and you could just erase, type it, hit F5. I'm on it. it. April Fool's is coming up. April Fool's. <laughs> April Fools, they let me code something. <laughs> Got them. <laughs> so yeah, it's just uh, the idea is just text. And you can see that it's double quotes now. Yep. The idea with double quotes is that it's a <laughs> so a, a string is basically a collection of chars. So this just means many chars. And that's what this is. And how this is stored is just Could like, you write it in technically a bunch of just ASCII yes, values? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can do that. You can give it you can say open curly brace, and then you can give it the first char, comma, the second char, comma, the third char. Yeah, you can do that. Which would just be unnecessary. Yeah, but it would result in the same thing. Yeah. It's the exact same thing. Um, and how string is implemented is that it's a class. It's basically a class that holds a collection of characters. That's it. Simple as that. So that's why I've been focusing on teaching you the fundamentals, because string isn't magical. There's nothing overly creative about it. It's just I don't, a, I don't believe you. It's just a I think there's something hidden underneath it. We can go uh, into the file when we practice later on. We can go into it, click on in, click on include string, hit F12 and we'll go into the file and we'll see string. Hmm. It's actually called basic string underneath. Wow, so there was something hidden. Yeah. yeah. But you said there was nothing hidden. It's not magic. There's a whole word missing. <laughs> oh, Gabe. Um, but since it's a class, you can have a lot of functions on it. So a string has, for example, a function called empty, which will say yes or no if the class is if the string is empty. So you can just say string name all of her if name empty return. Uh, it also has another one here. We're trying on level th on level on <laughs> line thirteen. Level thirteen. Level thirteen. Uh, I say name dot substring, and I say zero comma three. So I'm cutting. I'm getting a portion of the string. So this would only say hola. So this would be something like clan hyphen or something like that in a game, mm -hmm. for example. Yeah, if you wanted it, yeah. if you wanted the part of the, the name. And this makes a new string. So this doesn't doesn't change Olafur, the original string. This makes a new string that is only from the first element up to the third element. Uh, and then I'm actually using a thing we haven't touched on, yeah, which is, is C out. So the second include I'm using, include IOStream, I assume it's with input output stream. So you're getting an input or getting an output. Uh, and C out is 
often called console out. So I say standard console out. I do these pipes because I want to pipe into. Those these are pipes. These are called pipes. Yeah. They're just alligator mouths lined up. We use these alligator mouths. Yes, <laughs> thank you. And then I say short name, alligator mouth, and then you see a character. And I see backslash n. So this means new line. It's basically enter. Okay. Yeah. So what this will do is just it will print all of her onto the screen. <laughs> Perfect. Yep. But only if it's not empty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If it's empty, it just returns one. Yeah. Means that it didn't work. Cool. So that's string. Not overly complicated. It's just a, this is a container for text. If you think about that way. If you need text, use standard string. Cool. So there are a few uh, smart pointers out there. Uh, I'm going to focus on one. Um, if you out there want to learn about the other one, please do. It's called Unique Pointer. Um, but there's a, a few more things you need to, need to learn about Unique Pointer to use it more effectively. Um, but I'm going to focus on Share Pointer for now to begin with because it's a little simpler to use. Uh, but because it's simpler to use, there is a slight performance penalty on it. Uh oh. It's very slight. No, we're not going to notice it. But it builds up. We're not going to notice it. But it builds up. No. But it could build up. It could build up, yeah. yeah. If you use it very wrongly, yeah, sure. But there is a minor performance penalty in it. I don't accept these terms. <laughs> Good. You seem like a perfect C++ programmer. Because <laughs> they are all about this. Like The shared pointer penalty is very minimal, but it does matter. And that's why we have unique pointer. But it's a little trickier to use then. You need to be more careful with it. Uh, so yeah, share pointer. Uh, think of it as a pointer. It's just it's a pointer, like we've been playing with. But what share pointer does is it has an internal uh, counter. So not only is it storing, it's a pointer to whatever you want, like in this case, it's a pointer to int. Not only is it pointing to int, it's counting how many have copied the pointer. If I have the pointer in this case, Nobody has copied the pointer, so only one thing owns the pointer. If I then send it to you, a function, Got him. then two own the pointer, I own it, and you own it. If my scope goes away before the function returns, the counter is reduced by one. So the counter is only one. That means only you own it. Is this like it's like creating a stack on the heap? Yeah. It, think, think of it. You can think of it as a stack. It, it, it has the pointer and it has a number, which yeah. is just counting up how often it's been copied. So if my scope goes away before your scope is done, then it's reduced by one. And then when your scope is over, or whatever you're doing is over, it's reduced to zero. So in the destructor, where you usually do delete, it will ask a question. It will say, is the counter zero? If the counter is zero, then do delete. Well, in what cases would you want to use this? Um, when you don't know who is going to be using the pointer and you only want to delete it when nobody else is using it. So I create the pointer. Cool. It has a value of health. I give it to you. You might give it to someone else. Someone else might give it to someone else. You don't know. You don't know what's going on. It might be in different threads, in different applications. There's a lot of stuff going on. But does it also stop it from being used too much then? No. No? No. The big part is that... Um, the big part is that you don't want to worry about deleting it too soon or worry about having to wait for the last person to use it. I can make the pointer and then I can just share it around. That's why it's called share pointer. You, I can give it to you. You can give it to 10 other people. Nobody cares. And then when the last person is using it, only when the last person is using it, then it will be deleted. It's because of that counter. So when I create the pointer, the counter is one. When I give it to you, the counter is two. When you give it to 10 other people, the counter is 12. When you go away and I die as well, no. the only thing that happens in the destructor is that the counter is reduced by one, and then it asks the question, is the counter zero? Can, no. Can count delete, please? Yeah, the counter is 10. There's 10 other people using it. Then nothing happens. It just keeps being used. And then when these 10 people go away, the counter is 2, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Is the inefficiency the continuous asking? Uh, no. No. It's the threat safety. So let's say that I make the pointer and I give it to you. You give it to some 
other thread on the system. What has to happen is uh, when you do uh, that kind of check, you need to lock the, the basically the counter. You need to say, I need to increment the counter, and I need to lock it, because what if I'm giving it to you, and I'm giving it to someone else at the same time, and at the same time they're trying to increment the counter by one? What might, what might happen is that one of them increments it while the other one is incrementing it. So basically what happens is it should increment by two, but, but it gets confused. But it's only incremented by one. Uh, so it just can't handle more than one incrementation at a time. So what it does is it takes the counter that is internally to the shared pointer, and every time someone wants to increment it, it locks it. So if someone else wants to come in to increment it, and it's already locked, they have to wait. So it just stops, like, if they're at the exact same time, it just stops. So you just have to... Yeah, you put, like, a barrier. Often this... So this is called a mutex. Uh, this is usually uh, the the analogy is usually a toilet bathroom. That's what I was taught. Okay. So only one person can be in the bathroom at the same time. You don't want two people in the bathroom at the same time. So what you do is when you want to go into the bathroom, you check if the bathroom door is locked. If it's not, you go in and you lock the door. You do your business and then you go out, unlocking the door and then someone else can go in. So that's the analogy of this. and Toilets. Yeah, and because you did the locking, and because someone might be outside the door waiting, that's the inefficiency. What if someone forgot the lock? Then this thing is broken. Since this is code, nobody is forgetting to... <laughs> it's flawless. Sure. But that means that SharePoint is much nicer to use, that you can just share it, use it around. But there's a, there's a slight penalty of the locking. But if we only have one thread, which is what we've been using, there is no. Does a unique pointer just give everybody their own toilet? No. Unique pointer is like, um, uh, what's a good analogy for the unique pointer? It would be, let's say that you got handed down a precious ring from your grandma. There is only this one ring. It's maybe Lord of the Rings. Yeah. It's the one true ring. Yeah. There are no... There aren't two of the ring. It's yeah. just the one ring. That also means that if I want to give it to you, I need to move it to you. So if I need to give you the ring, then I have to. there's an action where I have to move it over to you, which means that I no longer have it. You have it, but it's the action of the moving it over. So I'm giving you the item. and it is, now It is Valentine's Day. Can you give me a ring? Yeah. <laughs> You can think of it, I give you my heart. No? Okay. <laughs> but this, well, then you're dead. Yeah, but that means that we, you need to learn about a thing called uh, an R value, an R value reference, and moving, which we haven't covered, and which is a very big topic on its own, which we we don't need to make something interesting. Not for now, but it's a, it's a fun topic. So that's why the unique, unique pointer is interesting, because you, there can't be more than one place in the system that has that pointer because the pointer is designed in a way where it just it doesn't work if i have the pointer and you have the pointer then one of us actually don't have the pointer <laughs> you have we both have boxes but only one has a president yeah if i gave you the ring then you have the ring and i can't do anything with it yeah cool so it's a pointer um so this is kind of a long way to make it right this is a lot of things to type stood shared pointer this thing here, so this is a template. So I went on a bit of a, a rant. So this is a template. And what this is, you say shared pointer, and then you say, what is, the, what is it the shared pointer of? So it's a shared pointer that contains an int. So that's what that means. So you just do the less than, greater than, and you put int. And you can put any type here. But then you have to say, again, equals to standard shared pointer int, and then you have here new int. So this is kind of a, a drag. You can also write it like this. So you say standard set pointer int, health, and then new int. But the way we're going to use it. So, so when you say it's the, so standard shared pointer, mm -hmm. so it's just telling it that it's going to get an int mm -hmm. that is a shared pointer. So, but what exactly is the template like so, saying? So there isn't a thing called a shared pointer by itself. Okay. It's always a shared pointer of something. Okay. 
So because this isn't a class, this is a templated class. So what this just means that, like with an int, we know what it's containing. It's containing an int. Uh, with standard string, we know what's containing. It's containing a character. And then we know that a shared pointer basically contains something, something of a certain value, of a certain amount of copies available. Of a certain type. A certain type. Yeah. but That can only be copied a certain amount of times. Yes. Or it can only be, it can be copied, but only deleted when the copies go down to zero. But in this case, the type is an int. Yes. So it's a shared pointer of an int, if you think of so, it that way. So when, it's when we want to use this, we give it a type, mm -hmm. we assign something a type, but we just want to make sure that something is only removed when it's done being used. That's basically what a shared pointer is used for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But we we never have to think about it. Okay. Like here, I made a shared pointer. I did a new. I used it. I returned it. You see, yeah. I never did a delete. Yeah. That's the magic of a shared pointer is Ooh. I don't have to care about it. But yeah, you do a shared pointer of an int. Um, so that's the type. So a shared pointer of an int, this whole thing here, that is the type. In the same sense that int is the type and standard string is the type or a player star is the type. Standard shared pointer int, that's the type. That's the whole thing. Then the variable is called health and I give it new int. We don't want to say new int. Yeah. That's the other thing. So there's another way to do it. So this is another new thing that we're going to be learning. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of cool. So I say auto health, okay? And then I don't say shared pointer, I say make shared. Ooh. So this is a function. I'm gonna make a shared pointer of an int. And then it's just a function, I'm calling it. And that's, this function over here returns a shared pointer of an int. This thing here, this auto, think of this as I can't be bothered to type it. This is that. That's the only thing that it means, because the compiler knows that standard shared point, standard make shared int returns a shared pointer of an int. So if I know that this returns a shared pointer of an int, the compiler knows that this returns a make uh, standard shared pointer of an int. Then why do I have to type it? I don't want to type all of this, so I just say auto. It's like barely shorter. <laughs> there are cases where this is really nice because the length is like a yeah, page long. Yeah. So this is just nice. You could just say auto health because you know that on the the right hand side of it, we know the type. So that's it. Okay. So that's a shared pointer. And I'm seeing from the time. Yeah, we have some time. Good. Uh, so we're going to be looking at string, which is just text. Shared pointer, which is it's a pointer to the heap, but we don't have to care about new and delete. It's all done for us. So we will not have memory leaks, basically, due to this. And the last one. Oh, yeah, sorry. I had a, I had an example. So here I have health. I make shared. Int. I give it 50. So I, now I have a pointer on the heap that has 50. You can see that I have a function, get int from shared pointer. You can see that I just send in. Like this is the whole. That's why I say that this is the whole type, this whole thing. I call it std shared pointer and I just call it a pointer. And then I can use it like a pointer. I can ask, is it is it pointing to something? Is it if it's not a pointer, then return zero. Here I can dereference it, just like we've been learning about. And since I dereferenced it, because it returns an int, uh, it contains an int, I can return an int. So the int get int from shared pointer, mm -hmm. that's the name of it. The variable name. The type name. The the function name here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Function name. <laughs> um, and that takes in two values. No, There's, that's all one. It's yeah. This whole thing is. Oh, that's why I said that stood shared pointer int is one type. Okay, so it's a type called a pointer. Yeah. So this variable is called a pointer. The type of it is std shared pointer int. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then when you're in main, mm -hmm. you can do auto health to basically not type out. Stood shared pointer int. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I say make shared because then I don't have to do a new in the line. The nice, the only nice thing about stood, uh, stood make shared this thing here is I don't have to say new int. Okay. Because we want to avoid typing new and delete. Okay. So this function here make shared. The only thing it's doing it's doing this. It's doing this line here. So, yeah. so this is just returning it. 
So but then the value 50 is that the amount that it can hold, amount of times it can be shared. No. Okay. That's it can, it can be shared infinitely. Oh, okay. So this one is just... The number 50. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Because I'm thinking again, the shared pointer is some upper limit of it too. No. Okay. So it's just the lower limit. And no. Th- no. And this... This, is, this is the value 50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just the... It just has a lower limit. Yeah, it yes, just has yes. a lower limit of zero. Yeah. Or one, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so that's... Okay, mm-hmm. uh, I think. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Probably not, but you know. We'll practice. Okay. And yeah. then the last one. Vector. So, uh, if you remember or have seen the the cache video we did in Ngon for Beyond FPS, um, we talked about that it's important that Items are next to each other. That one just came out yesterday, by yes, the way. <laughs> so that shows the importance of things being next to each other. That if they're next to each other, then uh, they're likely to be in cache, which means that it's likely you, you will have uh, performance increases. So a vector is basically data on the heap, but it's many objects, and they're next to each other. So fast. Fast, and it's a collection so it's many things. It's not like a shared pointer is one thing on the heap. A vector is many things on the heap. So if you want to have players, if you want to have the list of the games that you own, we actually use that. Right? If you want to, there's a lot of code in a new play which is stood vector games. Yeah, a lot of it. If you want to like give me all your games and then you take the vector of games and then we loop through the vector of games to find all the DLCs. And then we extract the DLCs. Like, yeah, you can do that. Uh, yeah, vector as a resizable array. So it is an array. Like we learned in season one, array is just a collection of, of objects. The thing was, is that as you keep pushing onto the array, once the array is full, what it will do is it will... Because in the beginning, the vector is empty. So it's there's nothing on the heap. I say push back five. It creates an array on the heap. Uh, of size one or two, depending on the implementation, it puts a it puts a five there, and then here's a pushback for two hundred. It puts a two hundred there, and then it says here, for example, I make a health, and then I copy it over. So it's a pushback. I just pushback is I can keep adding things onto it. What will happen is because you created an array of two in this case, and this is all happening in the background. You don't have to do anything. When you add the third element, what it will do is it will make an array of four and copy those two over and then add the third element. Because remember in, in season one that the array couldn't be resized. Uh, remember, we always yeah, had to yeah. re- know the number of the elements. Here, there's a trick where, let's say it starts with uh, two. So there's a space for two things. There's a space for two ends. Great. In most cases, it, it is zero, but let's say in this case, there's two. So there's two slots for ints. You say push back five, it goes into the first slot. You say push back 200, it goes into the second slot. When you want to put the health, which is 50, into the, the vector, you do push back 50, basically. It says there's no space. There were only space for two. So what it does is, is it, uh, it makes a new array that is twice the size of the last one. So it asks for a new array. And then just puts all that into the new one. Yeah, and then adds the thing one and deletes the old one. Yeah, that's how it does that. Okay. But you don't notice that. No. But there, it's a thing you need to know about that once you, if you keep pushing back, then uh, you're always making the new arrays once in a while. So if you know how big it's going to be, you can give a hint in the beginning saying like, I'm going to be at about 100 you don't know. So it will create a, an array of 100, and then you can push in. Because the the constant resizing can actually be a problem later on. Is it inefficient, then, to resize constantly? Yeah, it can be. Because, yeah, it, it, I it, imagine... Imagine if this is in a loop, and you keep adding, like, 10 elements, no. but the loop is running a million times, so you're keeping adding 10, element, 10 elements a million times, so it's always creating a new vector. So if you know it's going to be 10 elements... You can just say in the beginning, it's going to be 10, let's push them back. Or it's going to be about 10. Maybe you don't know. Or you say at least 10. Uh, yeah, we've seen increases doing that. We've seen a lot of speed increases. And then, because vector and shared pointer and string, these are all classes. Just like you've been creating. 
They have a constructor. They have a destructor. They all function. You just the don't same. see them. They're all just hidden. Well, they're made by the they're made by the standard library, and I get them and I include this thing here. So yeah, I can make a vector. Oh, yeah, here we go. I you can see a little white there. I forgot to delete the little border thing. <laughs> that doesn't matter. <clears throat> so here I have a vector of string. You see, so I have a vector of string. It's some names. I push back all of her. I push back Gabe, and then I access the first text, which is then Oliver, and I ask for the size of it. So, oh my god, there's so many new names. Like, <laughs> yeah. This is... Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things to learn. So, do you practice this? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's switch over to our Visual Studio thing. Double? double. Yeah. Let me zoom in a little bit. So, let's start with string. What zoom are we going? I'm at... 180 something. Okay. Let's do 200. There we go. So if you include string, hold on, I wanna, I wanna be like you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Today's Friday, my friends. Today Close. <laughs> Close. <laughs> okay, I wanna show. I wanna show you a thing. So if you click on just the name up here, the string, and you hit F12, it will load a little bit. Oh my god. Here we go. So it's it's doing a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm teaching, but anyway, here it is. This is string. It's doing, I mean, I guess there's a lot of comments. Yeah. Or a decent amount of comments, but it's still like almost 600 lines. Mm -hmm. Just a string. But it's there. You can look at it. How do I get rid of this? Uh, it could close the on that side. Huh. Yeah. So let's make a string. Yep. So standard string, say name is equal to well, put your name. Mm -hmm. Let's also include uh, Yeah, let's also include IO stream. So include IO stream. And then let's do standard C out. Let's do the, the what is it, alligator mouth? Yeah. <laughs> And That's what I always learned the when I grew up. I learned the greater than less than. Mm -hmm. the it's an alligator mouth, and it always wants to eat the thing that's bigger. Mm. It wants more food, so it's greater than because it wants to eat the bigger one. There we go. <laughs> yeah, you can just put name. Yeah, you can do it like this. If you hit a five, uh, you might uh, you might have to put a breakpoint. But let's look at. Oh no, it it shows you like this. It's on your other side. So if you move your console. It's not in, in. What? Move it. <laughs> Move the console into the interview view. What do you mean this one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, I, I never. We never used this before. No. So I was like, I, I needed to go away. No. Okay. Okay. It's here. It's back. Look at the first line. Yeah. Oliver. We executed you. Yeah. You're there. I'm here. It just says you. Yep. Nice. Nice. I didn't drag mine all the way over. This is how you get stuff out to the, the screen. You do a console out. Um, so because this is a class, you can do, if you hit name, you type name, and you hit dot, you'll actually get a list of all the things that it has. Oh, so I thought that said get alligator. <laughs> I think it's get allocator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's Friday. No, I can't read anymore. <laughs> So we can actually type in clear. Just double click on it, there you go. And it's a function, so you open and close. And then if I put a breakpoint here in line eight, and I run this, you can see that name is empty. Let me fix mine a little bit. There we go. So I put all of her in it, and then I cleared it. No, come yeah, back. It's gone. Not anymore. Yeah, you can see that um, if you open this, it has variables. One of them is called size. It's just how ma how much is in there. And capacity was how much, because uh, a character, an array of characters is also an array. So we had space for 15 characters before it resized. We can actually see this happening. So if I say name Oliver, name is equal to 
Let's put something really long. Yeah. And then put a semicolon there. And if you run this. Uh, yeah, hold on. Um. Mm, no, it's, this seems fine. Uh, I think you were running already. Oh. I think that was the case. Oh, yeah. yeah? <laughs> it's like, wait a minute. So if you open it, the you can see that even though the size now is zero, it had a capacity for 31. Or whatever you have. Did we type the same amount of numbers? No, because it, okay, it doubled. I was like, that's really no. impressive for random things. It's, it's doubling. Uh, it went it fifteen also wasn't random okay. because it was sixteen. It's base two and then thirty two and then sixty four. It's doubling as well. So, yeah. So you can investigate these. You can look at them. Uh, there's more stuff in the homework. Uh, let's look at share pointer. So you include memory for that one. You just delete all those. Sure. Wow. <laughs> sure. We include memory for that. You do, let's do the regular way first. So standard, shared. That's stood. Stood, shared, put, putter. Putter. Uh, let's make it of int to begin with, just to try it out. Uh, and then you can just call it, let's call it help. Is new int. Let me shrink mine a little bit here. And then you can say uh, star health is equal to 100. You can return star health. Yeah. Works like a pointer, like we've been playing with before. Mm -hmm. There's no difference. I'll get there eventually. That's okay. So if we have the breakpoint there at the bottom, or let, let's put it at uh, 6 as well, before we set the value. You can see that, so when we investigate it, you see it has... Uh, it has three things. It has PTR, pointer, it has a control block, and then it has a raw view of the whole thing. Uh, let's not look at the raw view. So the pointer is the pointer. It's the, it will be int star, basically. And you can see that it's a memory address. It's not junk. It's some value that seems to make sense, but there's nothing there. There's a minus eight million or something, some junk there. But then there's the control block. And that's the part that we talked about that locks the number and it's accounted and you can see it on your end. Uh, it says above in the type, it says ref count base. So it's a reference count. And that's another class. So it just has another class as the, yeah. But if we hit uh, F5 and go into the next breakpoint, you can now see that, well, okay, we went too far, I think. Not only did it, it's deleted now. Oh no. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's see if we can put it on the return value. There we go. Yeah. Now it's we went a little bit too far. So another pointer points to some memory address, and in that memory address is 100. So this is the same, same thing. What shortcut are we using uh, to run it? F5 to run it. F5. Okay. So, um, oh, one more. You don't have to run it. Uh, I just wanted to show you here really quick. Then you can see that the type of it is std shared pointer int. You can see on, on your side at the top there. That's the type. Okay? So if you do auto health is equal to std make shared of an int. And don't you don't have to change anything else. So you want to make a shared, it's of an int. You're hitting all the keys. I love it. I don't know what I hit. <laughs> I've, I've we've gone through this before. These keys are like maybe a millimeter or two off mm. because they're in a different format and they have extra keys. Mm -hmm. And it just completely destroys the way I type. Like, I can't type on these keyboards because I just keep constantly just going off a little bit and I hit like three keys at the same time. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. Uh, two colons. Ah, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we didn't change anything else. So when we uh, save it and hit F5, I want to show you that... I forgot. No, I'm good. <coughs> Sorry. I want to show you that the type is still the same. It's a std shared pointer int. Oops, I went too far. No, it's still in the, the last yeah. column, top last column. Yeah. So it's still a std shared pointer int. The auto, you can even, when you mouse over health, 
Uh, it doesn't show it that way. Okay, it's trying to be more helpful. It thinks you assume it knows what you. How dare you! How dare you! <laughs> I don't want to know what I'm doing. But anyway, you see here in the the breakpoint what type it is. Uh, but again, it has a pointer, points to nothing for now, head of five, points to something, then it's deleted, and we don't have to care. And all memory is... Uh, uh, it's yeah. gone. Yeah, people are asking about what buttons we're heading. Uh, it's just F5, you can also hit, go into debug in the top here, and there should be start debugging. And it also should show you the... It should show you the uh, hotkey for it. So if yours is different, that would be that. Okay. and. That's a share pointer. I think it's enough for the practice because I want to get into vector before we finish. So you just include vector. I want to show you if you just change the vector, it will yell at you. It was it will do this yeah. because we changed because this is included in memory. So that's why. Uh, let's just delete everything. We can take uh, make a vector. Let's make a vector of int just for simplicity. Um, let's just call it healths. There are many healths that we have. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and I, I want to just run this and nothing else. Maybe let's put the return so we can put the breakpoint there. Just so we don't have a breakpoint at the end. Mm -hmm. So we can see it. So if you open this, we see that the size of it is zero. And it has some sort of allocator. We don't have to think about that. And it has a raw view, we don't have to think about that. But it has a capacity of zero, because there's nothing in there. So if we say healths, and again, if you do a star, the dot, healths, see what it has. Pushback. In the top also, it's the most common ones. Pushback size, begin, clear, and resize. So these are the most common ones. So pushback is the most common one. And Oops. you can put a 10 in there. Mm -hmm. So let's run that. Let's see how that looks. You were already running. Okay. What? <laughs> now it looks weird. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Um, Hold on. There we go. My, my, my locals. It was on a different tab. No, you went one breakpoint oh, too far. Yeah. Okay, hold on. There we are. There we go. So if you open that one, you can see that the capacity is one, or the size is one. There's some allocator. We don't have to think about that. And you can see that the zeroth one is 10. The and zeroth one. Yeah. The first one. And you also see the type of it. It's int. So that's pretty nice. And if we keep adding, let's just copy this line a few times, maybe. Give oh. it 10, 20, 30, 40, something like that. Oh, wait. Yeah. Sure. Ah, mine's more. You have more. <laughs> that's good. So the size is 4. Your size is 6. My no. size is 5. Five. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm I'm Capacities. looking at OBS. It might ah. be weird. And then you can also see all the values. Oh yeah, it's like impossible to see on the tiny little screen. <laughs> yeah. So, and the nice thing also is, the, like the shared pointer, when this goes out of scope, if we go one one breakpoint more, poof, it deletes all the memory for us. Gone. So just like with the shared pointer, we don't have to think about it. We're not going to get a memory leak. This is good stuff. But so this is creating a vector is just creating a list that we can change the length of it. Yeah, we can just think of it as, um, if you think of it in the most basic terms, think of it as an infinite list you can just keep adding to. So what does pushback do again? So if you think of it as a stack, yeah, you're pushing it, and then next one, next one. Oh, okay. So it's basically just making sure, that, like you said before, they're making sure they're next to each other. Mm -hmm. So pushback is like, get out of the way. This is <laughs> Get out of the way. This is going here. Yeah. And you push back. So push is, you're pushing it to the back of the list. Okay. So um, there are uh, speed differences with, you don't have to, so uh, health, so there's push back. There's also in place back, which does a similar thing, but we don't have to learn that one now. Um, so push back is uh, usually very fast, and it puts the value at the end. So if you want to place a stuff at the end, you use push back. There's also, you can do insert. And what insert will do is you put it in a specific location. Like, I know where it's supposed to be. Like, let's say it's like a, the list is already sorted. And you figured out that, oh, uh, Bob needs to be after Andreas or something. 
So you figure out where Andreas is in the list and you put Bob after him. Uh, that is not as fast as um, pushback because there might be stuff behind Andreas. So what needs to happen is to make space, you need to push everything away and then put Bob in. So they might have to copy a lot of stuff around. That's why pushback is fast because we just put it at the end. There's no moving around. Uh, so there's also pop back. Pop back. Yeah, which will give you the last element. So we'll take and then we'll remove it from the list. It's like give me the last thing. You can actually just browse through. Uh, there's one more for the front. So front will actually won't actually do that. Front will give you the first element. Um, do, do, do. Maybe it's just insert. Well, let's get alligator. Yeah, get alligator. <laughs> pop back, push back. Yeah, I think it's just insert. There are other uh, containers that you can pop and push in all sorts of directions. Um, yeah. So that's a vector. And we have homework. Yes. Yeah. Ready? Yes. For those of you with questions, we will have a post show. Yeah. So if you stick around for like, I don't know, five more minutes. Yep. We'll get to that. Yes, sir. So homework. Um, the homework is in a few sections, so let's just go through. Um, the first one is practice using std string. Just play around with it. Uh, you can use the empty, size, clear, and the replace. Replace is pretty interesting. Uh, I recommend you actually Google. Google std string replace. You'll see a lot of examples and how people use it. Uh, and then the question is, how would you combine two strings into one? So if you have a string, one string with Oliver, one string with, with Gabe, how do you make the third string, which is Oliver Gabe? out of the two? That's one of the questions. Uh, and then it's share pointer. Practice using that. Uh, create a share pointer of all the fundamental types that we've been doing. Uh, make one of using a set string, like we did. Uh, and then send a shared pointer into a function, like we did, and also make a function that returns a shared pointer. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah. And then vector. Practice using that. Create a vector of all the fundamental types. Uh, play around, use empty, size, clear, uh, use the the bracket operator, uh, which is to get a certain element in the list. Uh, also look at front, how that works. Uh, try front on an empty vector, for example. It won't give you anything, but see how, what happens. And then try creating a std vector of a shared pointer of something. Okay. Yeah, so it's a vector that's containing shared pointers. How do you think about that one? Yeah, there we go. So next two episodes. So this is what I would feel is a lot of the fundamentals. Uh, they're kind of out there now. We haven't practiced enough, I think, in the episodes. We've been like practicing by yourself and all that. Uh, so the next two, which are the last two episodes, we're going to make something. So it's going to be more collaborative. We're going to be playing around. We're going to be sharing code, I hope. Um, so next episode, we're going to make like a simple thing in console, like a simple game, things fighting or whatever. Um, and I'll show you more of the problems uh, when you start making things, what you need, why you need it. And then hopefully for the last episode, which will be the 10th, um, we can make something a little bit more pretty than just a console application. Hope so. Cool. Cool. Same time next week. Bye. Bye.